Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, President Mamadou Buhari sacks suspended secretary to the government of the Federation, Babachir Lawal, and former director general of the National Intelligence Agency, IOKE, appoints boss Mustafa as new SGF. The All Progressives Congress applauds Buhari's appointment of Mustafa as SGF as main opposition party. PDP condemns President's decision, says it's an insult on the collective intelligence of Nigerians. ECOWAS court finds Nigerian government 88 billion naira over failure to clear landmines and exposures in the southeast more than 40 years after the civil war. Again, incumbent president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, wins presidential rerun to clinch second-term ticket as president. And on business news tonight, South Africa risks removal from Citigroup's World Government Bond Index as international rating agencies gear up to review the country's status. On sports news, Super Eagles technical advisor Gernot Rohr calls up 24 players ahead of the World Cup qualifier against Algeria and international friendly against Argentina. And from Abuja, President Mohamed Buhari meets with chief taints of the All Progressive Congress to discuss some of the issues affecting the party. tonight from Abuja where the president today wielded the big stick against the suspended secretary to the government of the Federation Mr. Babacher Lawal and the director general National Intelligence Agency Ambassador Ayoke. The president sacked the two officials based on the recommendations of the panel of investigations headed by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. Mr. Babacher Lawal is accused of misappropriating funds allocated for internally displaced persons in the Northeast while IOK is still being investigated for allegedly acquiring a property in Ikoi, Lagos, where the sums of $43 million and £27,000 £27, were recovered by the EFCC. Meanwhile, the president has named Mr. Boss Mustafa as the new secretary to the government of the Federation, although the sack of the two men comes over two months after the vice president submitted his report. Presidential spokesman Femi Additional says the president's action was not based on pressure. The president once again has shown himself to be a painstaking and a thorough person. Somebody who will ensure that the right thing is done at any given time. Somebody who does not play to the gallery. He, he, he got that report on August 23. It came in six volumes. Yes, there was an executive summary. But apart from that executive summary, like with a fine tooth comb, he went through the main report. And today we have got uh, his conclusions about the report and the recommendations. It shows you that the, 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 the meal of the gods, like they say, may grind slowly, but they grind finely. And for those asking what next after the sack, the presidency says all other actions will be taken by relevant government agencies. A statement by the presidential spokesman, Garba Shehu, says the president is committed to the rule of law and will not shield anyone from investigation. According to him, the position of the president, therefore, is that investigation agencies which have already commenced the investigation of the two officers removed from office will go on with their work of investigation without any interference or hindrance. The president, who is fully conversant with the provisions of the Constitution, will not stop the investigation of anyone because he has no such power under our laws. This is a decision of the Supreme Court. The statement goes on to say that the president, under our laws, can, through the Attorney General, enter a null prosqui, prosqui beg your pardon, to stop an ongoing trial. He may, upon conviction, order a pardon. Beyond these, the president cannot order investigation agencies to not investigate anyone and does not intend to do so in this or any other circumstance. Based on his wish and desire for a strict observance of the law, the president expressed the EFCC, ICPC and such agencies to proceed with ongoing investigations. 
Meanwhile, the ruling All Progressives Congress believes the president could not have made a better choice in appointing Mr. Boss Mustafa as the new secretary to the government of the Federation. A statement by the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Balaji Ablahi, says the APC is confident that Mustafa, being a strong party man, will provide the necessary linkage between the government and the party and with the other arms of government, especially the National Assembly. The statement describes Mustafa as a competent, loyal and dedicated leader who over the years has demonstrated that he has a pan-Nigerian outlook. And unlike the APC, the main opposition party, the PDP, does not think the president deserves commendation for the sack of Abuchil Lawal and the former director general of the Nigerian intelligence agency, Mr. Ayoki. The party's national publicity secretary, Dayo Adeye, describes the decision taken by the president as a slap on the faces of Nigerians and an insult on the collective intelligence of the people. Adeye's statement says, it took the president almost one year to attend to this matter while the culprits were having a field day at home and enjoying themselves. Whereas in the case of the opposition, especially the PDP members, even the evidence is flimsy. They will be visited with multiple harassment and intimidation for months and weeks without proper trial. The PDP also condemns the setting up of the investigating panel headed by Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo insisting that cases of corruption or alleged cases of misappropriation should be referred to the ICPC and the EFCC. To legal matters now, the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has fixed November 1st to rule on an application filed by a former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Diazani Alison Madreke. In the application, Mrs. Alison Madreke wants the court to compel the Attorney General of the Federation to bring her back to Nigeria to defend a criminal charge bordering on allegations of laundering 450 million naira. But the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission opposed the application insisting that it is, its only aim is to delay the trial. Our judiciary correspondent, Shola Shoyeli, has the report. On the 8th of February, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, filed a five-count charge against a senior advocate of Nigeria, Dele Belgore, and a former minister of planning, Professor Abubakar Suleiman. In the charges, the two men who were listed as the only defendants allegedly conspired with the former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Dezani Alison Madrike, to launder 450 million naira. The Anti Graft Commission claims that the money was part of a larger sum of $115 million, which Mrs. Alison Madrike allegedly doled out to compromise the 2015 general elections. Although the former minister was named in certain counts of the she was not listed as a defendant. The EFC has been at large. <laughs> Trial progressed considerably in the case as three prosecution witnesses have so far testified and faced cross examination. At the proceedings of Tuesday, October 3rd, the former minister, through her lawyers, brought to the notice of the court an application she had filed seeking to be joined as one of the defendants in the charge. In the application, Mrs. Alice in Madrike urged the court to compel the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami, to bring her back to Nigeria from the United Kingdom where she traveled to after leaving office in 2015. The former minister says that she would like to appear in court in Nigeria to defend the criminal charge since her name has been mentioned. <laughs> Her lawyer, Onyechi Piazo, a senior advocate, told trial judge Justice Rilwan Aikawa that the complaints against his clients in the UK was made by the EFCC. And if the commission was mindful of prosecuting her over there, it should expunge her name from the charges in Nigeria or allow her to come clear her name. One of the defendants, Mr. Dele Belgori, has opposed the application. He contends that Mrs. Alison Madrike is not a necessary party to the suit, as the court can determine his innocence and that of his co-defendant without the former minister. 
The EFCC, on its part, described Mrs. Alice Imadweke's application as frivolous and a calculated attempt to annoy the parties before the court. The commission also argues that after fleeing the country and making herself unavailable, the application of the former minister is misconceived, belated, and only aims to delay the trial, especially as the court cannot make an order against the government of the UK for extradition. After listening to the submissions of parties, Justice Aikawa adjourned to Wednesday, November 1, for a ruling on the application. Shola Sheeli, Channels Television News. It's been a story with many controversies and it did not start today when the two men were sacked. The event started several months ago. In this next report, our political correspondent Shimo Kimbalui refreshes our memories on the issues in our tough story and how it all started. Call him one of the most powerful men in Nigeria and you will just be right. The office of the secretary to the government of the federation wields so much influence and power. Mr. Babachi Lawa was a go-to man if you want anything done in the Buhari government. As a result of subsequent investigation of Engineer Lawa, but trouble reigned like April showers when the Senate opened what could be described as a can of worms, an investigation into the presidential initiative on the Northeast, which Mr. Babachi Lawa had, a damning revelation emerged. Mr. Babachi Lawa is linked to a 200 million naira grass cutting contract scandal. It became a talk between the executive and the legislature when the SGF snubbed the Senate by refusing to appear before the Senate had a committee on humanitarian crisis in the Northeast. The lawmakers were furious and the perception about the Buhari led executive, especially on the issue of corruption and anti graft war, became dented. The presidency insisted Mr. Babache Lawa is without seeing after he says it investigated a man. Even senators from the APC did not agree with the presidency. It comes to fighting corruption in the National Assembly and the judiciary and in the larger Nigerian state, the presidency uses insecticides. And when it comes to fighting corruption within the presidency, they use deodorant. <laughs> they insist Mr. Lawa must be prosecuted on the allegations. Who announced it? In May 2017, Why President Buhari suspended Mr. Lawa and ordered an investigation into the allegations of violations of law and due process made against Lawa in the award of contract under the presidential initiative on the Northeast Pine. Some people had asked for a quick action of the president on the matter. That he, he can even say that he, re, he resigned from Roller Vision. The fact that Roller Vision is associated with him already indicts him. President should have asked uh, Babachi Lawa to step aside, or Babachi Lawa himself should have either resigned or step aside. A three-man committee comprising another vice president, the attorney general of the federation, and the national security advisor was set up to investigate the allegations and report within two weeks. The president traveled out of the country on the day the report was due to be submitted. Yes. In August, the vice president, Yemi Oshimbaja, submitted the report to the president after his return from a medical vacation in London. Thank you very much. For Mr. Ayoke, the now sacked Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, got in the fray through a whistleblower alarm where an over 13 billion naira stash cash was uncovered by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in a luxury apartment in the Koyi area of Lagos State. The discovery of the huge money stacked in local and foreign currencies generated controversy and its ownership became a big question. Ayoke, the then NIA boss named Sophist, and has since been investigated. The two men were the main characters in the report of the vice president's led panel, and after three months, the presidency revealed that a vice president panel recommendation is to have the two men fired. Shion Wakimbalo, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, we'll be joined on the News at 10 by Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Rotimil Gwensho, on the sacking of Abashir Lawal and Ayoke Plus. 
A court fixes November 1st to rule on Diaziani Alison Madrake's plea for extradition from the UK to face trial.